Hi, I'm uh, Bill Bird uh, from Lyleton. We farm a couple miles out of Lyleton. We're about at 200 cows now, and we'll we end up we're covering about a I'm just a guesstimate about 100 acres in a winter, and we split our cows into two groups. So we use the home section for the one group and a half right across the road for the others. So and there's there's good shelters on both these parcels of land. So we we kind of rotate from year to year. It's similar to your spreading your manure. You you know you spread it this field one year and then you try and try and rotate it. Well, we try and do that with our feeding too. We'll feed on on this field one year and the next year we'll skip that field. And we also try and target areas that we know are you know, a little lighter land or just, you know, just to try, try and improve the, because it does improve the, the land, gets puts that organic matter back in there. And for growing crops, it's, it's really beneficial. And, you know, you can get a pretty high concentration maybe of, of manure, but in some areas, we always have to, you go out in the springtime, you know, as soon as you can get on and uh, with harrows and try and distribute it around and stuff. And you, but you don't always get it all. So when you go to seed, at least the way we we do it, we your air seeder will plug up in places, and some places you'll get through it, and and it won't grow. What you know, your wheat or canola or whatever you might it might not grow there. You know, a patch, what as big as your machine shed or something or half that size may you may have a patch that you only know, have the odd plant up but so you, but you can't worry about that or we don't worry about that because the next year you know that'll be gone you're not going to be feeding there again for a year or two or three or whatever it whatever it might be so and in this period like the one the half across the road is where we started doing it. So say in the last 10 years, like I'd say we've rotated across that, you know, maybe three, four times each field has, has got some uh, feeding done on it. And, and we really feel it's improved the land so you can, you know, your crop production's improved and we graze that after our crop production. We graze it, and and there's just there's just a ton of benefits to it. And the and the shelter belts are just the natural natural windbreak. You know, it don't matter which direction the wind is blowing from. You know, the cow finds the best spot to be, and and if the snow doesn't get too deep, but the, you know, it's it's easy to get out there. That can be a problem sometimes. By you know, sometimes by February, and you know, you've got your trails out to the field. If you've got a couple of feet of snow and mm -hmm. you get a big wind, then all of a sudden you're having trouble getting it back and forth to feed the cows. But um, what else? Um, that's, that's true. You could you could invite people to come and. Visit if you'd like to. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I would. I would be. Uh, I would invite people to come and, and see us. See how it works, and we can drive out in the field, and I can actually show you and, and see what you think. And you'd either. Uh, I, th I think anybody that's feeding cattle and you know would have an appreciation for this method. There's and there's other methods that are. Mm -hmm. Equally as good, maybe better even. Laying out the plants and falling down into the field. So there is some maintenance to it. And like I, like I said earlier mm -hmm. too about there being, them being too close together. So, you know, yeah, at least 15 acre fields are not, not very friendly for farming really. For you know, for crop production in particular, even for haying, it's mm -hmm. you know, 
the summertime, you're, the bigger the field, the better time you can make, the more production you get and everything.